Let's kick off with Labor and religion. Can you believe this, Caroline? The Labor Party is holding a faith and climate summit that will be attended by Albanese and Chris Bowen. Oh, wow. To speak about our plans for addressing the challenge of climate change and seeking common ground. I've always said that the climate cult is a religion, but now Labor is making it very clear that it's on an equal footing with mainstream religions. I call that blasphemy. What do you call it, Caroline? Well, look, I, first of all, I think it's smart that the Labor Party finally recognises that people of faith are not to be alienated by the party. I think it's happened for too long that, especially in places like Western Sydney, that our everyday Australians, mainstream Australians who happen to be of faith, have felt that they are not part of the traditional Labor base anymore because it doesn't represent them. So I think that's a good thing. But to conflate the two issues can be curious. I mean, I, I note that Christina Keneally was quoting parts of the Bible about caring for the earth. But I mean, people who follow the Bible also, um, to a T, also believe that uh, Noah built an ark because God wanted to punish us for the sin, for our sins. So is this God's punishment that we're experiencing at the moment with climate change? It doesn't always necessarily fit into the labour narrative of climate change as a man-made um, event that we can actually do things about by continuing to um, punish ourselves, really, charging us more for carbon and everything else. So, I look, it, it'll be interesting to see how they marry the two things up, but it is good that they are putting more of their focus on people of faith. Well, uh, absolutely. And uh, for me, I just find it uh, so cynical that they're conflating climate with religion. Cynicism, uh, just beyond belief. Uh, later in the show, we'll be talking to Melanie Phillips, the great writer and thinker. She has very strong views <coughs> on this conflating climate and religion. Gideon, on a kind of slightly... Uh, as part of this same topic, um, at this summit, Christina mm. Keneally expects every school to require all staff to live out and profess their values. So this sounds suddenly very ominous to me. I think what she is referring to is sort of Labor using its weasel words over uh, the school's ability to hire staff that are subscribed to their values and so on. Basically, Labor know they're being wedged here. But the other thing, this is so classic Labor, they realise, hmm, last time we insulted people of faith, we kicked them in the teeth, we made a campaign, campaign issue out of Scott Morrison's religion, we can't alienate them, but we don't want to change our policies either. So we'll just sort of slip in our policies and, and contort them into religion. A bit like when you give your, your, your dog it's heart medicine in a bit of meat or something just to slide it down. So uh, they're, 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 the problem is, though, Rowan, it's working. They are successfully co-opting. The global climate movement is successfully co-opting faith leaders. The Pope of Rome is issuing edicts not about God's wrath but about the wrath of carbon. Uh, I have read Orthodox rabbis in my religion, in the Jewish news, Orthodox rabbis talking about how God wants us to fix climate change. Now, I am not a Talmudic scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but as far as... <laughs> I'm aware God didn't have any preference about renewable energy or windmills or solar panels or anything else. Uh, the, bottom of the bottom line is people of faith aren't stupid. They don't want uh, their faith to be hijacked by this Malthusian, Greta Thunberg cult of uh, hysteria uh, like Labor attempted to do. They want good old-fashioned uh, principles inspired by God that can uh, say universal things about the human condition. So nice try, Christina Keneally. Nobody ain't going to buy it.